Anthony Hartwig here with the Salem Softball Coaches Corner with Mike Thorpe. Coach, thank you so much for joining us here today. Hey, thank you. So, yeah, we're here to talk about your program. And uh, this season, the, the fate of it's kind of up in the air. But what were some of your expectations coming into this year for the Quakers? Uh, we, we looked to do really well. We were excited because uh, last year we broke the school record, and I think a lot of people thought we might take a, a step back, but we were poised to go right back after that record and build on it. And you talk about last year being so successful. What was it about this year that made you guys so confident that you were going to keep taking those steps? Uh, each year we continue to get better overall. I mean, I know we lose some very good players and things like that every year, like every program does, but the overall positivity and uh, – um, skill level and everything just keeps continuing to go up year to year. Now, I'm sure you're in close contact with your players. What, what's the kind of mentality right now as they're going through this uncertain time? Um, I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, they're, they're uncertain right now. That's, that's the, probably the number one word to use for it. Um, we're trying to stay positive until they tell us there isn't no season. Um, we're, you know, we're just going to hold out and keep working towards it like there is one. As of right now, the, the start update is March 4th, I mean, May 4th. If that were to happen and we were to get softball this season, how confident are you that your team would be ready to go come May 4th? I think we'll be so excited to play that uh, we won't stop practicing and things like that the minute we're, we're able to get to it. And uh, we would be remiss if we didn't give you a chance to talk about the seniors in your program and, and what they bring to it and what it kind of – means to them if, if this is indeed the end of the softball season and they don't get one under their belt? Um, it would be very, very, very bad. You know what I mean? That's the ones I feel for the most because, like, every, every coach will probably tell you, you know, the others have another year after this and, you know, things like that. Um, we have six seniors, Ellie X-Line, Hayden Carner, Sarah Castles, Alyssa Bricker, Gabby Gibson, and Sloan Rudaball. And they're all on different levels on what, you know, this season meant to them and what they built for, and I was looking for a good season from all of them, to be honest. Tell, tell me, in this time when you guys aren't physically together but you're trying to keep the team united, how much of your senior leadership has shined uh, just keeping the team together right now? Our, our seniors are positive in nature, and they've just been great leaders all the way through, even before their senior year. Um, you know, things like that, uh, they've just taken leadership, I know, uh, you know. That's pretty much it. <laughs> what What are some strengths of this team? Um, if they get on the field or not, what are, what are some strengths that they have? Uh, their bond, to be honest with you. Uh, right now we have zero players with travel experience, but we compete with uh, – I think we can compete with anybody in the area. And most of that is because they like one another. We keep the drama tamped down, and in nature, they just got some really good kids. Uh, and in the offseason, they work really hard. Yeah, and you talk about the, the family mentality the team has, and right now family is so important. What's kind of one moment maybe last season where you saw that you really had that close-knit family bond in the team and, and you knew it was for real? I think we've seen it day in and day out. I can keep saying that, but when we worked hard uh, two years ago, we got the 13 wins, and that would have been all the seniors still on that squad. Um, we were real short of the school record, and I think last year getting to that school record, that moment, you know what I mean? That's just that was pretty big because uh, it was first winning year in 20 years for the program. What kind of things make you proud that you get to represent Salem schools and you get to put that on your chest every time you go out on field to coach? I love the family atmosphere. I mean, I've had chances to coach other places in the past, and I have coached other places. Uh, there's nothing like Salem for me. It's all about the family. I know a lot of schools probably talk about how close-knit they are. I can't imagine anybody having more than what we have. You know what I mean? Uh, coaching staff to all the way down. It's true. It truly is a family. And that's what hit us the hardest is when um, the email came across, we couldn't have contact. Mm. You know, one thing is not playing, but for us not to have contact, um, I know we're allowed digitally and things like that, but not to see each other in one, uh, you know, every day like that, that, that's what really hit home. What we, you know, everyone says baseball, softball will be maybe the easiest sport to get back up after a pause like this. Do you kind of buy into that, that maybe your sport might be the easiest to kind of get right back into the swing of things if we get it March 4th? I think so because, you know, the crowd so just could be so dispersed in a softball game. You don't line up to, to get in and out and things like that. The only thing I guess I would be concerned about would be the umpires. Most of them are on the, uh, the older side and they're real close to the game, you know, things like that. 
talk about your pitchers and, and how they're kind of keeping in shape and what you expected from the circle this year at Salem. Uh, we, we have a, a sophomore, Riley Troy. She's worked really hard um, in the weight room and uh, to get prepped up for this. Um, and Ellie X-Line, a senior, both of them are hitting in the 50s. Uh, they probably added about five miles per hour of speed, really hitting their spots, really working hard. Um, they've been going to their pitching coach on a regular basis. Um, as of right now, I think they're working with their fathers and kind of trying to stay there. But there's only so much I can, you know, tell them to do or, or ask them to do, if you will. But I know they're working. That's one of the beautiful things about softball. A lot of pitching coaches are fathers, too. So you take them away from their softball team, they can still go out in the backyard and work on their spin. Right, right. And, and they're blessed to have uh, somebody at home that will really work with them, too. So that helps out a lot. So those two pitchers, how do they kind of mirror each other? Do they have different styles, or, or how, how, how can you kind of use them strategy-wise? Um, yeah, Ellie x is more of a down pitcher, we call it. Um, her movement's more down and down and away. And Riley Troy's worked real hard on a two-seam that kind of mocks uh, a rise ball, if you will. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, my daughter's actually her pitching coach and things like that in the offseason, and uh, she's got her to get a little up movement. And Riley's worked really hard to, to get her own speed. How much of a advantage is that to have a pitcher that can, you know, throw that drop ball and then have another pitcher that can come in if she's struggling and have a completely different look and throw the ball, a rise ball up in the zone? That's big time. And we planned on using, we plan on using them, I should say, you know, uh, kind of like a 50 50 kind of thing. You know, we also have a freshman we like to get in the mix a little and a couple other pitchers, uh, you know, get a little bit of experience. But between those two, bouncing them back and forth, I think could really give the teams a lot of problems. And both of them are throwing probably mid-50s now. Yeah, that's great. Now we talked about pitching. Let's switch it up, talk about your batting order. Who are some of the really dangerous hitters that you have in your lineup that you're excited to see kind of walk up to the plate this year? Um, I know um, the two pitchers, uh, Ellie Exline broke a record for the um, batting average last year. She batted 488. So that was a career best at Salem, you know. And then I look at Hayden Carner, who was our cleanup hitter as a junior, I think she's poised to hit double digits home runs this year. I really do. I mean, she was that kind of a talent and is that kind of a talent once we get back on the field. I hate to keep talking about a past <laughs> tense, but I feel like I'm talking about last year, you know. Uh, Jenna McClish is exciting on the, uh, as a sophomore coming in, had a full year as a freshman last year. Uh, Hannah Kelms took some big steps. Um, you know, I could talk about Dorothy Moore. You know, she's, she's just took up travel, and I believe she was going to be poised for a big year. And uh, I think her whole lineup would have been dangerous, one through nine. This would have been – the deepest our lineup's ever been, in my opinion. Now, you know, I, I'm listening to you talk. I, I can just hear that you love coaching so much. What is it about coaching these girls and, and coaching that, that really kind of uh, you like so much? Um, I, I just love the day-to-day, the people. I, I mean, I hate to say it like that. I'm not trying to sound cliche or anything, but it's, it's about the people at the end of the day. And I think if, if it wasn't that way before, it definitely – became more of that now once you, once you start uh, not seeing the days on a, uh, girls on a day-to-day basis. Uh, we go to Tennessee every year. I always say the Tennessee's our excuse. Our softball is our excuse to go to Tennessee, I should say. You know what I mean? Because we, we just love being together. We go down and we play our games. I mean, we, we're 8-0 down in Tennessee the last two years. There's teams that honestly have more talent than us. It wasn't the coaching. I'm not going there. But what I'm trying to say is the girls were so excited to be down there that sometimes the girls up here got that travel experience, so they get over some of those nerves on a day-to-day. When we go down there, the athletes come out because the nerves disappear. And that's what I'm looking to really build on. I think they were building on that. I know they were coming into this year, so I'm really hoping we get started May 4th and they can prove that on the field. How long have you kind of been in the sport of softball and coaching it? Um, it would have been – it's about 10 years now. I started with my daughter in rec ball when she was young. Um, I coached two years at Springfield Local as the assistant head coach there. And then I went to Salem for the last five, six years. Now, obviously, to, to coach it at the level that you do, you have to have a love for the game. So what, what was it about uh, Salem softball that you uh, – softball in general that made you fall in love with the, the sport? Uh, the people. I'll be honest with you. I love the game. There's, I mean, when you're on the field, there's nothing but trying to win that game. And I think the girls pick up that same thing as competitors. But um, it's the day-to-day. It really is. It's, it's about the people. We got some great kids out there. I really do. Now, I'm going to have some fun with you before we let you go. Quarantine yeah. has kept us all inside for the last couple of weeks. What has been your favorite kind of quarantine activity in the house now that you've been inside? Um, spending more time with my family. Um, 
my daughter and I, we've been out there pitching. I have a younger daughter. We've been out there pitching, playing basketball, uh, hikes, things like that. You know, just uh, enjoying the family time. That's great to hear. And it's such a, a time when family is so important. And we like to hear that you're spending time with your family and that the Salem softball team is such a family-oriented kind of program. Yeah. I, I mean, I love each one of those kids. I know it might not be politically correct to say, but each one of those kids, I mean, I know how much it means to them. No, it's great. The best coaches in the world are the ones that truly love their players. So thank you so much for taking the time to join us today to talk about your program. And uh, we certainly hope that we see you on the field very soon. Sounds good. I'll see you on May 4th, right? All right, let's do it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Anthony. All right. And Bye. we're clear. Thanks. Right. Bye. Thanks. Just destroyed that. <laughs> Is that all you needed? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, that was good. I hope you missed that last part. Thought no, no, we Sorry. were clear. We were clear. Um, All right. I don't even know how to turn it off. But. Funny story. When, uh, when I saw your name pop up on the contact list, and it was Michael yeah. Thorpe, I went to school with a Michael Thorpe. So okay, I went, South Range? Yeah, South Range. All right, so I'm friends know. with him on Facebook, probably because we have the same name. Right? <laughs> so yeah. I texted him. And I was like, are you, did you, did you go to, are you coaching Salem? And he, yeah. goes, he goes, no, that, that's not me. So it was just, a, it was a funny, uh, funny uh, happenstance that there are two people in the area with the same exact name. Yeah, it was. Somebody told me once they Googled my name for whatever reason, probably to get it, see if they can get my phone number or something. But they said, I didn't know you played at South Range basketball, I guess you played or something. And I said, well, I don't know, man, that dude's pretty young. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he, he, was a, he was a decent pitcher back uh, for South Range. Oh, was he? Okay, yeah. I think he played basketball, too, somebody yeah. told me. He okay. did. I know him on Facebook. I don't think he posts much or either that or he, he hides me. I don't see his stuff pop up or nothing. But, but I know I was friends because he asked me. There's some German guy named, uh, in Germany that had the same name that friended me, too. So that's been like 10 years. <laughs> I said, next time you're over here, look me up. I'm at, you know, like the old pen pals or something. Right, you know? right. How you been making out with everything? We're we're doing good. We're trying to get every coach on and trying to give them all the the chance to highlight their program and definitely highlight the seniors. That's the biggest thing we want to do is make sure whether we get a season or not, these seniors kind of get their uh, their day in the sun. And if you want to reach out to your seniors and tell them that we love to talk to them if they're willing, then uh, you can send them our way. Okay, I definitely will. And and the only thing I was gonna. Um... I'm going to mention to you. Oh, um, on a side note, if this, this school year is canceled, I know we get 10 days to coach in June and July, and I didn't mention that in the interview, but um, I've already talked to a couple of local high schools. We're going to play games because we're allowed 10 outside of this, and I'll get an insurance blanket. They'll represent their school, but they won't, if you will, through the OHSAA. But their seniors are, seniors are going to get a game one way or another. That's awesome to hear. We love it. And if you get more details on that, let us know, and we'll see what we can do to kind of, you know, pr at least promote it a little bit. Okay. As long as they still allow us those 10 yep. days if they cancel it, you know. Other than that, you know, we're at the mercy of whatever they say. But right. I'm, one way or another, they're getting the game with us. <laughs> you know, right. So. Even if it has to be uh, seniors versus parents or something. I don't care if it's football, right? Ball, right? <laughs> right. Let's get them something. Get That's them right, something. Man. I appreciate all you do there, and, and especially representing for the seniors. All right, yeah, send them our way. We'll, right. we'll take care of them. All right, have a good one, man. You too. All right, bye. bye.